this tutorial, I'll be taking you on a walkthrough of the Phase 1 Capture One Pro 8 user interface. Hey there, I'm Michael Volshinovich here for RGGEDU, and uh, in this tutorial I'm going to be taking you through uh, a walkthrough of the user interface for Phase 1's Capture One Pro 8. And the idea here is just to get you familiar with the majority of uh, the options available uh, within Capture One so you know where to find different things and how to navigate uh, the user interface itself. So um, when you first approach Capture One, it can feel a little bit daunting, but actually everything is fairly logically organized with the majority of the functionality found on the left-hand side here. So this is our, um, our tool tabs, essentially. And then in the middle here, we have our image viewer. And on the right here, you see the image browser. Now that image browser could be placed on the right or on the bottom, uh, depending on what your preferences are for your workspace. And if you don't like it placed on the right-hand side, you can go to view and you can change that there. You can say place browser below or place browser right. So starting off with this left-hand side here, we have the various tool tabs available to you uh, within Capture One. And if you don't see all of these different tool tab options, it's possible that you're in a different view uh, for your workspace. And so those different options are here. If you go into workspace, um, there's a bunch of different options. So if you're in simplified, you're going to see far fewer options than what you see here uh, versus the default workspace. So just make sure you select default if you're not seeing all these different options. So the first tab here is um, the library tab. And essentially that contains all of the different session folders, albums, favorites, um, and things of that nature. So whatever collection or session you're in, you're going to see the different um, uh, options or essentially the folders that you've created within that particular collection or session. Down below we have filters, so they allow you to essentially apply certain filters to that particular collection or session. And so if you've got star ratings, you can filter by those ratings and it will tell you uh, how many you have within each rating. You can also use color tags. You can use various uh, keywords, metadata, and dates. So if you've got a collection with lots of different uh, shoots within it, uh, the date filters will obviously be quite useful. In the next tab, we have our capture tab. So this is where you would go for uh, tethered capture. So you can control your camera through here. Uh, you'll see camera information. You can set up uh, ISO, white balance, and things like that. Uh, you can also control capture pilot, which is uh, a pretty cool uh, sort of additional app that um, phase one has created for capture one and that allows you to wirelessly push the images out of capture one into something like an iPad so if you've got team members on your team that are not sitting right in front of the computer but they have an iPad you can actually push those images that you capture uh, out to their iPad so they can see what's going on now you can do this with any uh, camera. It doesn't have to be a phase one camera. Uh, you can attach, uh, you know, regular 35 millimeter DSLRs to this as well as mirrorless um, cameras. So it doesn't have to be a phase one camera. In the next tab here, we have our color adjustments. So that includes things like white balance, uh, the color editor, which is really powerful. And we're going to spend a fair bit of time on it in a future video. Uh, color balance are essentially things like, um, you know, applying color casts and tints to your, uh, to your image. Next tab here, we have the Exposure Adjustments tab, which we're again going to spend a fair bit of time on in a future video. But really, basically, it just breaks down into the typical things you would expect to do with exposure. So adjusting contrast, brightness, saturation, overall exposure in your image, as well as all of this high dynamic range stuff here, which is pretty much just shadow and highlight recovery. Below that, we have a Levels tool, which is actually really powerful inside of Capture One, and we'll be talking about that again later on. Um, so you can use this for exposure recovery, adjusting shadow densities, highlights, uh, a lot of different things. And then finally, we have curves over here, which, um, you know, if you're familiar with curves inside of Photoshop, same idea, but obviously working off of the raw file. Next over here, we have our lens corrections. So um, this is where you can apply corrections to whatever lens profile uh, Capture One has picked up. You can fix things like distortion, uh, sharpness fall off within the corners, and of course, light fall off, which is basically just vignetting correction. Below that, we have uh, purple fringing. So that's just chromatic aberration. And you can also create lens profiles for things like uh, dust removal and color casts and so on. Next tool we have here are cropping tools. So this is where you would go to crop down your image for a particular ratio, um, rotate it, flip it, 
Uh, you can also perform keystone corrections here. And um, there's some really nice tools actually for fixing keystone um, when you're working with, you know, interior spaces and things of that nature. Really useful. And uh, again, we're going to be covering this off in more detail later. Next here we have um, the details tab. So this is things like sharpening, reducing noise, um, fixing moiré, adding grain, um, spot removal, uh, basically things that operate on, you know, a more fine level. Um, you can think of them as a pixel level, although um, you shouldn't really think about pixels, sort of RGB pixels in general um, within Capture One because Capture One doesn't really look at your image in terms of pixels. It looks at the image more like the human eye would. So it doesn't interpret things in RGB. Um, really, it's kind of treating the image as a whole and all of the operations are more um, sort of algorithmic that try to understand how the problems occur and then Capture One tries to fix them as opposed to looking at individual pixels and fixing them on that level. Um, so if you find that a little bit confusing, uh, just kind of ignore what I said there. But uh, the point I guess I'm trying to make is that Capture One goes beyond uh, individual pixel values to try and see the image in a much more high level like a person looking at the image would. So next tab we have here are local adjustments and uh, local adjustments are essentially adjustment layers um, like you would find in um, Photoshop, for example, that allow you to mask in particular areas and operate on those areas. So um, phase one has actually dramatically expanded the amount of options available to you for local adjustments. Uh, before in Capture One 7, they had uh, far fewer options. And they've added quite a few in uh, Capture One 8, so it makes it even more powerful. And again, we're going to spend a fair bit of time on local adjustments as we go on. In here, we have um, styles and presets, so you can create particular presets for um, you know your images. If there's certain looks, color casts, and things of that nature that you like, uh, you can create them here and save them and recall them in future images. The information tab basically allows you to put keywords in for your image, look at things like metadata. And then the uh, process tab allows you to output your images into some particular format. So um, JPEGs, PSDs, TIFFs, uh, you can create all these different process recipes and export your images out of Capture One. And finally, we have some batching tools over here um, that allow you to batch process images. And then we have a black and white tab. So uh, this is basically all of the different black and white adjustments that Capture One offers. Now, the order of this is really irrelevant. If you ever want to change the order of these tabs, hold down the command or control key and then just click and move uh, that particular option and you can change the position of it. So if you don't like this particular order, you can always move everything around. And we're going to talk more about this uh, when we're uh, talking about customizing Capture One. Uh, now, if you also don't see a particular option in here, you can right click this area and say add tool tab, and that will allow you to pick a tab that may not be displayed and display it up here above. So if you're not seeing it, it's either a workspace issue or simply um, you can just recall that particular tab through here. So that's really kind of the most important part of Capture One, just being familiar with all these different options. And like I said, we're going to be diving into them uh, in more detail in future videos. So um, other section we want to cover here are essentially your top bar over here, which um, has some options like importing, um, undo and redo, uh, you know, garbage, essentially trashing that image, uh, taking off all of your adjustments. So this actually reverts all of your adjustments. Uh, things like dealing with different variants so you can see certain variants and um, variants inside of Capture One are essentially alternate versions of your image. So um, they're kind of like virtual copies inside of Lightroom. So what it does is it just takes the image and creates a metadata copy of that image. So you're not duplicating the whole image itself, just the set of adjustments made to that image. And you can see different variations of that image um, without having to actually replicate all of the data. So we're going to be talking more about variants further down the road. Uh, additional tools that you have up above here, these are your cursor tools. So it's essentially how your cursor should operate, what it should do. So for example, if we have pan selected and we zoom into our image, um, moving around our cursor will pan the image for us. If we have something like the loop selected and we click down, uh, it will just allow us to zoom into a particular area and so on. And so up here, again, this is all customizable. So these are just the set of options that we have available to us, but things like highlight warnings, grid displays, uh, copying the adjustments and pasting them to other images. 
and also printing configuration tools. So uh, again, we're going to talk about how we can customize these options, and these are fully customizable along the top here. Uh, but you should just be kind of aware of the different options we have along the top. And then, of course, we've got our browser on either the right-hand side or on the bottom where we can kind of scroll through, look at our images, rate our images, and then in the main window is where we're going to operate on the image itself. So I hope that gives you a pretty good overview of the general interface inside of Phase 1 Capture 1 Pro 8. Uh, like I said, we're going to be diving into individual options, tools, and how we actually use the application in future videos. But hopefully this gave you a pretty good start into um, what Phase 1 Capture 1 Pro 8 has to offer. So we'll see you next time.